Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to discuss coloring and chromatic number. A coloring for a graph is a coloring of the vertices in such a way that the vertices joined by an edge have different colors. For example, in this graph, we see the endpoints of one edge are two vertices, one red and one blue. If you analyze any of the edges in this graph, you'll see that the two vertices are different colors. The chromatic number of a graph is the least number of colors needed to make the coloring. It's possible that the coloring we're looking at is the least number of colors needed, and it's possible that it's not. But if we're told that this is in fact the minimum coloring, then we can determine its chromatic number just by counting the number of colors. This diagram shows the minimum coloring of what's called the Peterson graph. What do you think is the chromatic number? If you said three, you're correct, because there are three colors required, blue, red, and green. If we attempted to use only two colors, then we would find it was impossible to avoid having an edge with two of the same color vertices. When you're asked to color a graph, you should choose a vertex with highest degree and color it. Use the same color to color as many vertices as you can without coloring vertices joined by an edge of the same color. Then choose a new color and repeat what you did in step one for vertices that are not already colored. You're going to repeat step one until all the vertices are colored. For example, if you're asked to color the graph below and give its chromatic number, you're gonna start by choosing a vertex with highest degree. Here are the degrees. The degrees are just the number of edges that touch each vertex. The vertex of highest degree is degree five, so we'll start by coloring that one. The actual color we choose doesn't matter. In this case, I chose red, but you could use any color you want. Now we're going to find other vertices that are not joined to this particular vertex by a single edge and we're gonna color them red as well. For example, here, and there are no others that can be colored red. All of the remaining vertices are joined to those two red vertices by a single edge. So now we're gonna choose a new color, and we're going to repeat what we did in step one. All the remaining vertices have degree three, so any one of them will work. I picked this one, and I color it blue. Now I'm gonna to try to color some other vertices blue, as many as I can. I have to avoid vertices, such as this one, that is joined to the blue vertex by a single edge edge. So I'm going to go to the next one. I can't use this one, but is it possible to color this one blue? The answer is yes, because it's not joined to any vertex of blue color. But there are no more vertices I can color blue. So I'm going to repeat step one until all the vertices are colored. Choosing a third color, in this case I picked yellow, but again the actual color doesn't matter, just that it's different from the others. And I can color both of the remaining vertices yellow. So here we have a coloring of the graph. If you experiment with different colorings of this same graph, you're going to find that you always need at least three colors. So the chromatic number is going to turn out to be three. The coloring of graphs are used to solve practical problems, such as scheduling problems in management science, allocating transmission frequencies to TV and radio stations, the study of cell phone traffic, and an old problem, coloring maps so that no two regions that share a boundary are the same color. We'll discuss the problem of coloring maps in my next video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That will help other students to find the video as well. 